everyone, what's up? Welcome back to my tutorial channel. Daniel's here and today I'm going to talk about convexity and immunization. First, convexity. Definition. The curvature of the present value or the U function is referred to as convexity. Convexity can be measured by using the second derivative of the function. And similar to duration, we have two types of convexity, the modified convexity and Macaulay convexity. The modified convexity is measured by the second derivative of the function of present value respect to the effective rate of interest i. And Macaulay convexity is the second derivative of the uh, present value function respect to the force of interest rate delta, where delta is natural log of 1 plus i. If we derive, we derive d2 uh, second derivative function, we got the modified convexity at interest rate i, c mode i, is equal to summation t times t plus 1, v to the t plus 2 at over pi, and Macaulay convexity c max i is equal to summation t squared v to the t at over pi. And there is a relation between the convexity modified and the convexity Macaulay. The modified convexity is equal to the Macaulay convexity plus duration Macaulay over 1 plus i squared. Next, immunization. Immunization is a process of protecting a financial organization from changes in interest rates. And in this video, I'm going to introduce two types of immunization. The first one is Reddington immunization, and the second one is the full immunization. The Reddington immunization is a process of protecting a financial organization from small changes in interest rate. And the full immunization is to protect a financial organization against any change in interest rate. D2 immunization uh, have some condition to be met. For Reddington immunization, there are three conditions. The first condition is the present value of asset should be equal to the present value of uh, liability. And uh, the second condition is the modified duration of asset should be equal to the modified liability duration. Remember, the duration is just the first derivative of the present value function. And the last condition in Reddington immunization is the convexity modified of access should be greater, strictly greater than the modified convexity of liability. And remember, the modified convexity is the second derivative of the present value function with respect to interest rate i. For full immunization, the first two conditions of Reddington immunization also applies for um, the full immunization. However, the last condition of Reddington immunization is not necessarily for the full immunization. And for the full immunization, we um, add two more condition there should be one asset cash in flow before the liability cash out flow and there should be one asset cash in flow after the liability cash out flow so that is everything for uh, convexity and immunization now let's do some exercises the first question consider a thousand dollar bond with six percent coupon that matures in two years coupon payments are made semi-annually, the current yield to maturity is 5%, calculate the convexity of the bond. So for this question, coupon are paid semi-annually, but for convexity, we calculate convexity, the second of, uh, of the present value function respect to the effective interest rate i. So I'm going to say v is equal to 1 plus 0 0.05 over 2, the whole 2 need 2. The modified convexity used in the formulas is summation t times t plus 1 v to the t plus 2 at over summation v t uh, at. Uh, the third coupon is paid at times 1 half. So this is 1 half, 3 half. 
v to the one half plus two that is five half and thirty is eighty. The second coupon I pad at time one, so it's thirty times one times two v cube. Um, the next coupon is pad at time three half, so thirty times three half five half v to the seven half, and at the end of two years, we got a coupon thirty dollars and uh, the face amount a thousand dollars. So the last um, at time two, we got ten hundred thirty for eighty. T is two. T plus one is three. V to the T plus two is four. And the bottom is just the present value function. So the uh, convexity. Uh, is 4.49. By the way, if the question just said calculate convexity of the bond, you understand that is modify convexity. If the question say find the duration uh, without regarding the Macaulay duration or modify duration, we think about Macaulay. Second question, find the effective annual interest rate of 16 year zero coupon bond if its convexity is 249.13. So for this question, first of all, we write out the price function. Let's f be the face amount, then the present value function is f b to the 16, and then find the second derivative. The second derivative of this present value function is p double prime of i is equal to 16, 17, f, v to the 18. So now we find a convexity. Remember the convexity modify is f, um, is the ratio of the second derivative with respect to i over uh, the present value u function. So it's equal to 249.13. And use this equation to solve for v and then solve for i. So we got v squared is 0.9159 and leading to I is 4.49%. Question 3. An asset provides two cash inflows, 10 in 6 years and 50 in 9 years. Given an effective annual interest rate of 3%, compute the convexity of this asset. This question is basic. We should have to apply the modified convexity formulas. So the present value function is 10 v to the 6 plus 50 v to the 9 because 10 is a cash inflow at time 6 and 50 is a cash inflow at time 9. And then the first derivative is uh, negative 16 v to the 7 minus 450 v to the um, 10. And then we differentiate one more time. The second derivative is 10 times 6 times 7 v to the 8 plus 50 times 9 times 10 v to the 11. So the convexity modify is second derivative of uh, present value function respect to i over the present value function. So that is 76.71. Question 4. A hundred dollar par value bond with 2% annual coupons and maturing at $113 in three years, given an effective uh, a new interest rate of 3% compute the convexity. This question is similar to question number 3. First, we write down the present value function. The first coupon is paired at time 1, so we got uh, 2. 2 is the coupon. And then at time, at time, um, at time 2, another, another coupon of $2 is paired. And at time 3, we got 1 coupon $2 and the uh, uh, redemption value 113 So we got $115 at time 3. And then we differentiate twice. We got P second derivative at I is equal to 4V cubed plus 12V to the 4 plus 1380V to the 5th. And using I is 0 0.03, so V is 1.03 to the negative 1. So the modified convexity is 11.05. Question number six. A company must make a payment of $7,000 in seven years. The only investments available are two-year zero coupon bonds and eight-year zero coupon bonds. These bonds could be purchased in any quantity and the yield rate is 5% effective. What face amount 
of this bond should accompany by in order to satisfy the first two conditions of Reddington immunization and also check if the third condition is satisfied. So, first we have to determine which um, amount is liability and which amount is assessed. Here, the company must make a payment of 7,000 in 7 years. So, 7,000 is what the company owe. So, that is liability. And the bonds are assessed. Here, the question asks for the face amount of its bond. So, I'm going to call X as the face amount of the first bond and Y is the face amount of the second bond, respectively. So the present value, the first condition of Reddington immunization is the present value assess should be equal to present value liability. Assess, we got X is the face amount of two years zero carbon bond. So the present value of the first bond is XV squared and the present value of the second bond is YV to the eight. The present value of the liability is 7V to the 7. So divide both sides by V squared. We got X plus YV to the 6 is 7000V to the 5th. The second condition of Reddington immunization is the first derivative of the present value of the assets should be equal to the first derivative of the liability present value. So negative XV cubed minus 8 yv to the 9 is equal to negative 49,000 v to the 8. So x plus 4 yv to the 6 is 2400 by, uh, 24,500 v to the 5th. Now we subtract 1 from 2. We got 3 yv to the 6 is equal to 700, uh, 17,500 v to the 5th. So y is 6,125 6, and x is 914.11. Now we verify the third condition. The second derivative of the asset is 6xv to the 4 plus 72yv to the 10. And this is the same as 275, 249.988. And the second derivative of the liability present value is 392,000 V to the 9, which is 252,686.69. So it's clearly that, uh, it's clearly shown that the second derivative of assets should be greater than the second uh, derivative of the liability. So the third condition is satisfied. The last problem. A company buys a 7 year zero carbon bond that we mature for 7,000. Is planned to use this asset to make two payments to customer. The first payment is X in one year and the second payment is Y in eight year. Given an effective annual rate of interest 3% determine the amount X and Y in order to be uh, immunized, uh, immunized against small changes in interest rates. Specify whether the full immunization was achieved. So first, we use the first condition of uh, Reddington immunization because to protect again a small changes that mean Reddington immunization. So the first condition of Reddington immunization is the present value assess is equal to present value uh, liability. So 10,000 V to the 7 is equal to XV plus YV to the 8. And simplify to be 10,000 V to the 6 equal to X plus Y V to the 7. The second condition of Reddington immunization say that the first derivative of asset is equal to the first derivative of liability. So negative 70,000 V to the 8 is equal to NAV X V squared minus 8 Y V to the 9. And simplify to be 70,000 V to the 6 is equal to X plus 8y v to the 7, subtract side by side, we got y is equal to 8828.57 and x is 1196. And to, uh, if you look at this question, you see that at time 1, we got 1 liability, 
and then at time 7 we got an asset and then at time 8 we got a liability however for full immunization it said that there should be one um, cash in flows after and before cash out flow cash out flow the first cash out flow is, uh, is at a time one but before that we don't have any cash in flow and after that we don't have we have a one cash in flow which is uh, 10,000 and if you look at the second uh, cash uh, outflow which is make a uh, time eight right after this cash uh, in uh, outflow, we don't uh, we don't have any cash inflow. So the full immunization wasn't achieved. Is not achieved. That is everything for today. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you guys enjoyed my video. And I have only one video left uh, in the series of financial mathematics preparation. Um, so see you next time. Bye.